At the start of the film, eight candidates are shown preparing for a hiring exam for a lucrative corporate position. Some candidates motivate themselves with encouraging words, while others make minor changes to their appearance before entering the examination hall. The room is dimly lit, with desks for each candidate placed uniformly throughout. It also includes cameras to monitor their movements. After the eight candidates are seated, a guard with a gun enters the room, clearly making the candidates nervous. He is followed by a man who does not give his name but simply introduces himself as the invigilator. He then apologizes to them for the difficulties they faced in getting to this room, revealing that the candidates have passed all previous hiring processes and are the finalists. If they pass this final test, they will get the jobs of their dreams. As the rule of the test, the invigilator claims that no federal law applies inside the examination hall and that candidates are only required to follow the exam's law. They are not permitted to communicate with the guards or invigilators. Similarly, if they intentionally or unintentionally damage the paper and leave the room for any reason, they will be disqualified. The candidate will have 80 minutes to complete the test. There is only one question on the paper for them to answer. The invigilator then asks if anyone has any questions. When no one responds, he wishes them luck, sets the timer, and walks away. The candidates turn their papers around and discover that they are completely blank. They all look at each other, confused. They become increasingly nervous over time. Consequently, candidate number two begins writing on her paper why she believes she is qualified for the position. The camera in the room zooms in on her paper and the guard is instructed to throw her out because she ruined it. Number two begs for a second chance as the guard locks the doors behind her. A while later, number five realizes that the rule says they can't talk to the invigilator or the guard so they can talk to each other. He tells the others the same thing, convincing them that they must work together to figure out what the question is before they can find the answer. The group discusses several ways to pass the test, but everyone is equally perplexed. Throughout, candidate number one does not speak at all. One man attempts to introduce himself, but number five suggests they give each other pet names so they do not have to reveal their true identities. He goes on to name candidate number one, Deaf, because he has yet to speak. The boys are named brown, black, and white based on their race, while the girls are named blonde, brunette, or dark based on their hair color. After that, White suggests they get up from their seats because there is no rule stating that they cannot. He takes a chance and stands up. To everyone's delight, the guard stays put, allowing them to move around freely. Dark believes the questions are written on paper using invisible ink or a watermark. They all agree to test the theory, but don't know how. Dark then gets up and checks the lights in the room to see if there is anything written on the paper. However, nothing is visible. She continues to insist that everyone check their own because the question could be in just one of them. Everyone does as she says, except Deaf, who remains silent in his seat. White takes his paper and checks it under the light. When they do not get any results, Black suggests that the writings may be visible in UV or X-rays. The group then begins looking for a switchboard to see if there is a way to turn on different types of lights. When they can't find one, they decide to look for the source of the light themselves. Deaf does nothing to help them and remains nervously seated. Blonde discovers strips of emergency lights throughout the room. But, because there are no switches, the group must break all of the other light bulbs to cause an emergency and activate the lights. Brown retaliates, claiming that they cannot take such a risk. So they vote on it and ultimately decide to go ahead with the plan. After breaking all of the light bulbs, the room suddenly glows blue due to the emergency black light. Everyone, except Deaf, begins to look for the question in the newspaper. However, they are disappointed again because they are unable to see the question. Brunette requests that everyone remove the first layer of the strip lights because they are not lit. This could produce UV rays that can help them. They use the woman's heels to break the strips, revealing another type of light. However, they are once again disappointed because these lights also do not work. The group now has only 60 minutes left. A frustrated White asks everyone to consider alternatives. As they brainstorm ideas, White mentions that they can do anything with number two's paper because she is already disqualified. So they gather around her desk and attempt to trace the paper with a pencil. 
Still, no question arises. White then tears her paper into sections, allowing them to experiment with various methods. He then pees on one of the papers to determine whether it is liquid activated. However, this does not work either. Black and White have a heated argument about what to do next, but they stop when they hear Deaf cry. He sobs quietly in his seat while the others laugh. After that, the man begins to ramble in French. He asks if they can see anything in the paper, claiming that it reflects their image. They disregard his ramblings and resume their discussion of ideas. When Brown speaks, everyone falls completely silent. He proposes his own theory, claiming that they are not taking an exam, but rather participating in some sort of betting show. The company's board members have placed bets on who will crack under pressure, and their only purpose in being there is to entertain themselves. Dark believes that the board members have better things to do with their time, but Brown claims that money is the least of their concerns. Given their wealth, the board members most likely enjoy taking risks. Now, everyone has their own ideas. Some suspect the invigilator, while others believe the CEO is responsible. They start to crack under pressure and insult one another. Brunette is confident that no one is watching them because the CEO is actively involved in the company. He possesses all of the company's rights and authority over everyone. She is clearly more knowledgeable about the company than anyone else. Brown asks how she knows so much about the CEO. Brunette already works for the company in HR but has never met the CEO. She applied for a higher level position and now she is here. White then reveals that he was headhunted and offered the position, but the others claim they applied for it. However, they all have one thing in common. They know nothing about the company or what it does because they were told not to ask questions. Brunette then explains that they are applying for a well-known, multi-million dollar pharmaceutical company called BROG. When a pandemic struck the world's youth a few years ago, they were the first to discover a cure. Their current annual revenue is $20 billion, thanks entirely to their CEO. Suddenly, Black suggests that the company may have discovered a cure for the latest deadly disease, which is killing millions of people around the world. Dark is suddenly intrigued and asks Black for more information. This makes White suspicious, so he asks Dark if she is also infected with the virus. Dark claims she isn't and dismisses the issue. To divert attention away from herself, she approaches the guard and pulls a lighter from his pocket without saying anything. Then she looks at the fire alarm. The group intends to use the lighter to activate the sprinkler because water could damage the writings on the paper. Dark climbs a chair but fails to reach the fire alarm. White assists her by giving her a rolled piece of paper which she lights and uses to activate the alarm. Water soon begins to shower, but the papers remain unchanged. Suddenly, the guard approaches the group. Dark then unfolds the paper in her hand, revealing that it is her own. White had betrayed her in order to loosen up the competition. The guard drags Dark away, calling White a bastard. Following that, an enraged Black threatens to punch the white lights out. This turns off the lights, and the group realizes they are voice activated. When Deaf begins to cry again, they warn each other not to say anything inappropriate. White sits slyly in front of him, bullying the poor guy into tearing and eating his own newspaper. The guard approaches Deaf and dismisses him as well. Now there are only five candidates left. Black mocks White for being a bad person, but White insists they should thank him for removing their competitors. He also claims to know the question, but refuses to tell the others. In a fit of rage, Black knocks him out with one punch. The group then ties him to a chair and covers his mouth with a tie. White eventually regains consciousness. Brunette removes his gag and requests his medication, explaining that he is also infected with the virus and must take medication every hour in order to survive. Back searches his pocket for pills but finds none. This leads the group to believe that White is simply making excuses in order to be released. However, White claims that one of them has taken the pill and promises to tell them what the question is if they return it. Soon, he loses consciousness and begins to tremble. Some believe he is faking, but Balk claims he is having a seizure due to the virus. They begin looking for the pill he mentioned but cannot find it in the room. With only 15 minutes remaining on the timer, they check each other for the pill. Brunette suspects Brown of taking the pill and is proven correct when she discovers it stuck to a chewing gum under his table. 
she attempts to feed it to White, but Brown tosses it into a vent. As the others try to get it out, a stressed-out brunette approaches the camera and asks the invigilator to save the man. But because she spoke to the invigilator, she is immediately disqualified. After she leaves, Blonde uses a bobby pin to extract the pill and saves White's life. She also unties him in the process. Everyone expects him to provide the answer he promised once he has recovered. White reveals that the answers lie within the candidates themselves. They've been looking for a question for a long time, but White believes there isn't one, and the one left out is the answer. The rest of them believe him, but before they can act, White rushes to get the gun from the guard. Black pushes him aside and takes the gun himself. He points it at White, who confidently says he will not shoot anyone. He simultaneously attacks Black and takes the gun. However, as he is about to use it, he discovers that the gun has fingerprint recognition. So White uses the guard and points his gun at the others. He threatens everyone to leave the room on their own so that he can take the position. Brown walks out on purpose instead of retaliating because he is afraid of being shot. A scared blonde walks slowly outside, yelling lights out at the end. The room goes completely dark, causing White to shoot in random directions. When the lights come back on, Black collapses on the floor, a bullet hole in his chest. White looks around and notices Blonde still has one foot inside the room. He was about to shoot her as well, but the timer had stopped. Now, White approaches the camera and informs the invigilator that he has won the competition. The guard approaches and shows him the time. White is surprised to see that they still have 20 seconds left, which means he is disqualified for speaking with the invigilator. It is then revealed that Def had changed the time while they were discussing other topics. Finally, the only one left is Blonde. She enters the room and picks up Def's glasses, which had fallen while he was being taken out. Using those, she examines the paper and notices Question 1 written on it. To her complete surprise, Def enters the room and reveals that he is the CEO of the company and was in the test to keep an eye on everyone. Blonde approaches him and says, No. The CEO and the invigilator smile, knowing she has answered the question and passed the test. It turns out that the invigilator asked them if they had any questions at the start of the test, which was the only question they had to answer. The entire exam was designed to test the candidate's intelligence and attentiveness. They hire Blonde as the CEO's secretary, but she declines because she does not want to work for a murderous organization. The invigilator reveals that Black isn't actually dead and that the bullet that hit him was a capsule that heals the wound after penetrating the body. It is actually the magical medicine they recently created, which can cure any disease in the world. Finally, Blonde accepts the job, and the film ends with her shaking hands with the CEO. Subscribe for more videos like this, enable notifications, and leave a like to support the channel. Thank you for watching.